coming to the history of graphene, this is a very important topic, as I said, uh, for all the carbon scientists. Single layer graphite um, has been studied for a very long time. Huh? This is also because uh, first we need to understand the properties of single layer, then understand the properties of graphite, or then translate those properties to graphite and the uh, effect of pi electrons. This is also studied uh, for, this is also important for a lot of hydrocarbon materials. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first time it was studied, um, not necessarily graphene, what you call graphene nowadays, but what is known as graphene oxide and reduced graphene oxide. This was studied by uh, Benjamin Brody in, 19, uh, in 1859. Hmm. Okay, but the first uh, paper on the electronic properties of single layer graphite was published in 1947. Okay, this uh, still remains a very uh, highly cited paper and actually uh, if you're interested, you should read, it's a very nice paper about theoretical calculations of uh, the band gap of uh, graphene with very nice explanation. Okay, now coming to the work of uh, Millie and Jean Dresselhaus, uh, this, uh, these two scientists have also contributed significantly to the, um, you know, structure of graphene like uh, sheets hmm, and also carbon nanotubes. So basically, uh, in the last three decades or so, what has happened is people also with the, this is the case with fullerenes, people started studying carbon materials which are not 3D. Hmm. So they do have sp2 or sp2 like sheets, but they are not 3D structures. One uh, thing that we have now understood is that these materials are also very stable. In the past, it was believed that anything that is 2D may not be very stable. So last 30 years or so, uh, we have been studying non-3D sp2 carbon materials and this includes a lot of the range of carbon materials you know, um, the spherical structures the tube like structures and also the sheet like structures hmm. okay um, and then also single layers and and multi layers and bi layers and how can you differentiate them using uh, for example Raman spectroscopy so uh, a ca the characterization of these materials has also been uh, very interesting for scientists and um, Millie and Jean uh, Dresselhaus have uh, contributed a lot of uh, you know literature there are also books written by them review articles and that is also something um, that I believe everyone should read okay the term graphene as I also mentioned that um, by um, uh, by IUPSC it was suggested or officially recommended in 1994 however this term was also used before hmm, by Hans Peter Wurm and um, and the uh, and his team it was used actually in 1962 as early as 1962 Okay, it did become popular only in the, uh, you know, um, late 20th century or early 21st century. Okay, uh, there are also some other studies. So these are rather scattered studies, but you can find, uh, you know, papers from 1960s and 70s, which uh, which talk about few layer, few layer graphene also. They talk also about different, uh, you know, fabrication methods, for example, uh, epi epitaxial uh, growth. Maybe we will also talk about that. So there are also papers from the 60s and 70s that uh, that you can find. In 2010, the Nobel Prize was given to um, Andreas uh, Geim and uh, no Novoselov. Um, this was given for the for discovering a new method of graphene preparation. And this new method is basically removing one layer of graphene using a scotch tape uh, from uh, from highly oriented pyrolytic graphite. For developing this method, they were uh, they were given the Nobel Prize. Okay, uh, so. The point is that in parallel, so all of these things when they were going on in parallel also, um, we were we have been uh, developing the industrial methods of graphene production, mm -hmm. whether it is for the purpose of making graphite or it is for the purpose of getting uh, graphene itself. The point is that um, CVD methods, pyrolysis methods have been, uh, you know, uh, they are being uh, discovered in parallel or they are being optimized uh, in parallel. So this has also been going on for, uh, for let's say, 100 years. And now we have um, reasonably go good methods to produce uh, whether uh, you know, you know, the pyrolytic graphite at industrial scale. Then you can also optimize these methods to now get single and bilayer uh, structures because now that is more important to us. So this is the his history of uh, graphene that is uh, very important for, for you to know. 
Since we are on the topic, I thought I could also introduce a few concepts of the nomenclature of uh, uh, graphene and related materials. And we do know that nomenclature is important. So don't say what's there in the name. I mean, we all write our names on our publications. Uh, so names are important, right? Uh, um, but what happens when it comes to carbon materials? It's not just graphene. Um, even in the past, uh, graphite has been used in a uh, you know incorrect fashion. So for uh, somebody who's working in the field of carbon, the confusion uh, of nomenclature is, is kind of unsurprising. Hmm. Okay, uh, but let us talk about graphene. So, um, you know that a lot of bulk carbon materials, especially uh, graphite-like materials, highly oriented pyrolytic graphite or just pyrolytic graphite, these uh, materials um, will very well contain graphene-like sheets. So, sheets of hexagonal uh, structures, huh? sp2 carbon sheets. In some cases, you will have uh, defects or point defects. Hmm. In some cases, you will not even have the point defects, especially if you're, uh, for example, if you're taking a transmission electron microscope uh, image, then you, you take the image of a very uh, small and well-defined area. In that case, there is a, a high uh, probability that you will find some uh, graphene-like sheets or sheets of perfect hexagon. But that does not mean that this entire material should be called, uh, you know, a graphene. Hmm. Even whether or not these sheets are bonded, so if they have 3D structure or not, or in the case of uh, non-graphitizing carbons, you may have curved carbon structures, but you will also have some short range order. So there you can also find some flat sheets. So in all of these cases, it is not necessary that these sheets are bonded with one another or not. The point is that when you see a graphene-like sheet in a bulk carbon material, then you don't call that bulk carbon material graphene. Hmm. The term graphene should only be used for single and defect free layers. We will come to that. Okay, so you should also understand again why the nomenclature is important because when we are talking about the single layer, hmm, then we are talking about one very specific set of properties which is not valid for multi layer or even bi layer graphene. Okay, the effect of the pi band is completely different when we talk about single layer defect free, uh, you know, graphene or when we talk about any any other way even when you have two layers you do lose that effect so this confusion is not right if you tell somebody these are the properties of graphene then you should only be talking about single layers because those properties are not valid for uh, for large scale materials hmm. okay um okay now as i mentioned that uh, the, because graphene has become a very popular material that uh, is uh, of course that is the reason that is attributed to this uh, confusion of nomenclature um anyway if uh, you are a research scholar or even uh, you know for all the students i would say that you should use the term graphene uh, you know in a very um, you should judge it for yourself what is correct and you should definitely follow the recommendations there have been several articles i'm going to provide you um, uh, with the reference uh, to some of these articles and you can actually find out also you of course always have the IUPAC uh, gold book for your reference. So whenever there is a confusion, please look up what is the correct terminology and only then um, use the terminology. Even if uh, some very popular uh, or highly cited publications have uh, used a wrong terminolo terminology and you think that this is not correct, then um, it's your responsibility to find out uh, what is correct. Hmm. Okay, so this article uh, is the one that I was talking about. It was published in, in the journal uh, Carbon. There you can find out uh, a lot of guidelines. So I have not repeated all of them just because, uh, you know, there is no point you can find out uh, uh, these details in the article. In fact, very, um, uh, it's very detailed, not just for graphene, but all the bulk carbon materials also which contain graphene. There are, uh, uh, you know, there are certain recommendations that uh, you uh, might want to follow. Okay, so however, I have provided a summary here. Hmm. So again, I mentioned that the term graphene without the you know uh, without another word attached to it layer so just the word graphene and not graphene layer hmm. that should only be used for single layer defect free um, hexagonal structures sp2 hybridized okay but if you have uh, you know if you have if you see these sheets as i said in uh, pyrolytic graphites or um, any other carbon materials in that case you can say graphene layer so the term graphene alone should be used only for when you are talking about single layers there's nothing you know around it so these are single layers mm. but if these kind of layers are found inside a bulk carbon material then you can say that graphene layer or graphene like structures i personally uh, prefer to use the term graphene like structures especially 
when um, I'm talking about non-graphitizing carbons because I don't know exactly what is the extent of defects. Maybe in the transmission electron microscope, I can see a certain type of defect or I can even see a defect-free layer. But it is quite possible that um, in the same material at another point or another location, you will have uh, defect containing layers or, uh, you know, um, you may even have uh, voids, you may have uh, a, a, a very strong curvature and so on. So in that case, I personally prefer to use the term um, graphene-like sheets or graphene-like layers. But graphene layer, if you can find a good graphene layer inside a carbon material, you can use the term. Hmm. So remember, graphene and graphene layer are used differently. Hmm. Okay, this, pub this uh, recommendation, this publication will probably also uh, explain this in more details. Okay. Now, I said that we use the terms like bilayer, multilayer, few layers, layer. So, how many layers are um, acceptable? Hmm. In the case of two layers, sometimes also three, but uh, typically two layers is bilayer, as the, as the name suggests. Okay. Few layer. Few layer graphene is the term that is used for two to five layers. So, uh, if this is two or three layer, even up to three people end up calling it uh, bilayer graphene. But then between two to five, up to five, uh, you can call it few layer. But if you have more than five, but still less than 10 layers, you will call it multi-layer graphene. If you have more than 10 layers of graphene, then it is not, it, the material should not be called graphene. It's just then it should be called a turbostratic carbon material. Turbostratic, again, because the turbostratic arrangement of the sheets. But if you have more than 10 layers, then you're not talking about this 2D material. Then you're actually talking about the 3D material, even if it is in the powder form. Hmm. So in that case, you should just call it turbostratic carbon, hmm. irrespective of the defects also. Huh. Huh. In, when it comes to defect also, it's interesting that um, defect containing graphene is has become a very um, common term. Um, so graphene is a single layer defect free. But if you have uh, some defects, that I, I will be actually in one of the lectures, I will be talking about what are the the commonly found uh, defects in these uh, uh, graphene sheets and some of them have also been um, you know well characterized and defined sometimes also these defects induce very special uh, properties to your graphene sheets so in that case if you have well controlled defects hmm, or if you have intentionally created or induced these defects in that case it's all right to um, call it defect containing uh, graphene but if you know unintentionally if you just got a lot of defects and you did not want them hmm, in that case that material might not be graphene at all hmm. and again when you say defect containing graphene Maybe you should, can, if again, the same thing is valid if it's only if it's a single layer, you still, you call it a defect containing graphene or you say defect containing graphene layers in a bulk carbon material, for example. Hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, here I have also shown it uh, with some pictures. So the first picture here you see, this is what um, you will call graphene. You will see that there is also, it's not a perfectly flat sheet and there is some waviness. There is some natural waviness um, when it comes to graphene uh, structures because the bonds are always vibrating so um, the, you do get some waviness that is not necessarily because of defects however when you have so defects means non six membered rings when you have these non six membered rings you have a stronger curvature hmm. this kind of uh, you know um, waviness can also be thermally annealed out it can also be um, you know this is a sort of a vibrating sheet okay this is graphene bilayer graphene two layers Hmm. Multi-layer graphene, this is an acceptable image of multi-layer graphene. So you see that these are layered uh, structures and they can be uh, converted into graphite if we anneal them. Uh, but in any case, if you want to use them also directly, then um, these, uh, you know, up to 10 layers can be called uh, multi-layer graphene structures. However, if you see something like this, where you do see these multi-layer graphene-like structures, hmm, but you also have some curved carbons or if you look at other locations in the same material you may find something else in that case you call it turbostratic carbon hmm. so on this slide i have um, mentioned the curved carbon terminology so this is something that i have proposed and um, that's why i do not impose it on anyone uh, you may or may not use it but i personally find it and i'm explaining it here because i have used it in this uh, course I personally find it convenient to sort of group all the curved carbons together. And that is because um, these curved carbons do not have perfect uh, sp2 hybridization. They may have sp2 plus n hybridization. So that is why it's easier to, to in order to explain all these materials which have uh, sp2 plus n hybridization, uh, the term curved, uh, curved carbons can be used. Um, so 
this is again this is my uh, rather personal recommendation so it is up to you if you would like to follow um if you are doing this course uh, in that case um, uh, this is important in the exams and so on i might uh, use the term uh, curved carbon the point is that um, you can find these kind of curved carbon structures with some, sometimes you don't have much curvature sometimes you have a lot of curvature sometimes you have completely spherical structures okay but this is beyond the waviness of graphene Hmm. So remember that the term curved carbon should only be used when you have non six membered rings in your structure and that is why you are getting the curvature. So we are not talking about the um, you know waviness. Hmm. Okay. In the uh, you will find these kind of uh, uh, carbon structures in nanoscale materials and also in the bulk carbon materials. So here are some examples. Um, so the first one, the open cage structure that I have written, or even the closed cage structure that I have written. These kind of structures are also found in uh, non-graphitizing carbons, but they can also be found individually when you are preparing graphene um, using a chemical wafer deposition or something. You may end up finding these uh, you know open cage kind of structures, not fullerenes, but open cage structures. So whenever you have a lot of uh, defects in your graphene or point defects in your uh, graphene like sheets then in that case they tend to fold hmm. and then when they have a, a very strong curvature then you uh, then you should not call them graphene even if they are single layers uh, because they do have then a lot of non six membered rings in them so these are um, then called curved carbon structures okay uh, fullerenes of course are curved that we know uh, tube like structures also have a certain curvature Hmm. So th those can also be then uh, included in this uh, this category, and of course, in the case of non-graphitizing carbon, as I mentioned already, also in the case of uh, electrospun carbon fibers, you often see these curved carbon sheets. So all of these uh, uh, materials then can be um, then can be uh, called uh, curved carbon structures. So on this last slide, now I will uh, briefly uh, tell you what is the um, what are the reading materials. So all these uh, publications that I talked about uh, in the case of history of graphene, um, you can also find these. Uh, uh, you know, some of these papers are are mentioned here, and then also you can uh, some of these are review articles. For example, then in these review articles, you can find the citations and read further. And then um, it's very important. Uh, I would like you to. To judge it for yourself, whether you should call graphene a new material, whether you should say that it was discovered in 2010 or 2005, because um, the discovery is a big word. Hmm. So you should uh, you should judge it for yourself. What is uh, the history of graphene? My job here is to provide you with the with all the relevant literature. Now, if you're more interested uh, in the uh, electronic band gap and in the uh, calculation of Hamiltonian, as I had uh, mentioned in, uh, in, in before. If you're interested in uh, you know physics of graphene, then there are already uh, some lectures that are available on NPTEL. So I don't want to repeat these uh, properties, but here are a couple of uh, lectures that are mentioned. Also, you will find uh, small topics or uh, lectures here and there on graphene materials or on graphene, crystal structure of graphene especially. You will find in the basic material science courses, material science engineering courses, which I had also, uh, some of the names I had mentioned also in my previous classes.